I regularly get a bunch of questions about hormones. I will be responding to these questions over a series of videos. I want to remind everyone that I am not a medical doctor, so I cannot provide that perspective. However, I have observed a number of people go on hormones, and I have knowledge based on this collective experience. Also, I will be talking about testosterone and estrogen in each video if there are any differences between the two. Most of the time, there are a lot of similarities though. Before you perform your first injection, whether you are doing it or someone else is, please watch a video made by a reputable source teaching you how to do this. This means it should be an instructional video explained by a nurse or doctor. Make sure to watch the kind of video which demonstrates the kind of injection that you will be doing, as there are two different ways of injecting. One way of injecting is intramuscular, which means the fluid is deposited into the muscles. The other is called subcutaneous, which means the fluid is deposited into the fat. If you are injecting intramuscularly, it is possible that you will get what feels like a painful knot or bruise at the injection site. This means that your muscles were tense during the injection. Depositing fluid into a tense muscle will keep your muscle tight. Intramuscular injections are typically done at the top of your butt or the top of your thigh. An easy way to relax these muscle muscles, regardless of which spot, is to relax the sphincter in your behind. Once this is fully relaxed, begin the injection, and you should not get a knot or a painful like bruise, but if you do, it won't be as severe. If you already have a knot, you can take a warm bath and massage the muscle outwardly from the injection site. If you are injecting subcutaneously, this can lead to some itchiness near the surface of the skin at the injection site. This does not mean you cannot go on injections or that you had a bad reaction to hormones. It's simply what happens with subcutaneous injections for some people. Now, if this happens, what others find to provide some sense of relief is a topical numbing cream or an anti-itch cream. Either way, it should go away within a few days. Some people will have a bad response to an injection with a new vial. This means that they feel poorly for a few days after the injection. It sometimes happens when you change pharmacies or the pharmacy changes the oil that it uses for the injection. If this happens, please call your doctor and explain your reaction. Before you assume that you can't be on injections, check on the oil that you have in your vial and try a different oil. You might need to propose this to your endocrinologist. It is possible that you need to get a new vial with a different kind of oil. Changing oils may require changing pharmacies. Pharmacies will have a number of different kinds of oils that are in the hormones, such as sunflower oil, sesame oil, peanut oil, cottonseed oil, all kinds. Find out what kind of oil is in your current vial so that you make sure you don't turn around and buy the exact same kind of oil. So call ahead also to the new pharmacy to confirm what kind of oil is used prior to filling your prescription. It would be really unfortunate to spend money on a new prescription that has the exact same results. Now, some people choose to actually just tolerate the couple days of feeling poorly and just know how that's gonna be because for them, it's not that big a deal. But others, they don't tolerate it much. Just to let you know, if you are feeling poorly, it doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't go on hormones. At the same time, be sure to speak to your doctor about what's going on just to be sure that something else isn't taking place. Vials of hormones come in two different concentrations typically. For example, 100 milligrams of testosterone per milliliter or 200 milligrams of testosterone per milliliter. The same applies to estrogen. This means that the vial with 200 milligrams per milliliter has twice as much hormones contained in it as the vial with 100 milligrams per milliliter. 
before you question the amount of hormones that someone else is injecting compared to what you are injecting, make sure you know what concentration they have. Also keep in mind there might be other factors at play why, as to why they have a different amount they are injecting. It's best not to compare yourself to others, rather just follow what your lab work says. Also, you will want to dispose of your needles into a sharps container, which is usually something that you can purchase at a store that sells over-the-counter medications. It should be at the same place that you fill your prescription or the same place that you can buy cold medicine. If you don't have a sharps container and there isn't one available for purchase, you can use an empty water bottle. The idea is that you keep the needles in a safe place out of harm's way from others. So that empty water bottle should be able to have the whole needle inserted into it and closed off. Disposal of these is very important. So it is essential that you put it in something as opposed to just leave it out and just let it go away in the trash. That's also just, it's not very hygienic. If you found this video helpful, then please remember to like, share, subscribe, and if you can afford to do so, make a donation to my student loans, which exceed $100,000. Thank you.